Hey everyone, Credit Shuffle here, and today we are gonna be looking at how credit card companies make money. Now you may think that this is an obvious topic, but actually there are quite a lot of different revenue streams and it makes for quite an interesting discussion. But first of all, if you are new here, why not hit that subscribe button? We upload several videos a week telling you how to maximize credit card points and rewards and how to improve your credit score. Okay, let's get started. First up, we have interest charges. The largest source of income for credit card issuers, that's the banks that issue credit cards, is interest charges. Now, typical credit cards in the US have APR, annual percentage rates, of you know between 15 to 25 percent okay that's the the percentage of interest you pay per year the annual rate let's look at how your interest is calculated on a daily basis which is really the way uh, how you'd figure out how much interest you are actually paying so they divide the annual apr rate by 365 because there are 365 days in a year and then at the end of each day, if you have an outstanding balance that you haven't paid off by the due date, they multiply that balance by the daily interest rate, and that then is repeated the next day until you pay off your debt. In each billing period, the interest charges for each day you were in debt are added up and appear as interest charges on your statement. So let's look at an example. With a 20% APR rate divided by 365, that would give you a rate of 0.054% per day. So with a debt of $1,000, you would incur a 54 cent interest charge per day, or at least for the first day, because most credit card companies compound interest on a daily basis. So the next day, the interest from the first day would be added to your $1,000 debt, and your new debt would be $1,000.54. Then that would again be multiplied by the daily rate, which means that the second day you would pay 54.02 cents in interest more than the first day. And this compounds, so you actually pay more than the APR rate. And this compound interest is one reason why interest charges are so profitable. Compound interest keeps the rich rich and the poor poor. Next, fees. Credit card companies charge all sorts of fees, whether it's annual fees that many higher tier credit cards charge, or late fees for a late payment, foreign transaction fees, balance transfer fees, are to name just a few. And this is quite a big source of income uh, for the credit card issuers. Fees, I think they're pretty self-explanatory, so I don't think we have to go into too much detail about this particular topic. Next, merchant fees. So you probably know that every time you swipe your card, you are charged a payment processing fee, and this is called the merchant fee because it's paid by the merchant. Although, to be honest, they are most probably passing the cost of it onto you with a small percentage increase in the price. These merchant fees actually get paid to several different parties. So let's break down the merchant fee. The first portion of these merchant fees goes to the credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, etc. The next portion goes to the credit card issuer, aka the bank, for example, Chase, Bank of America, Citibank, etc. It's worth pointing out that Discover and Amex act as issuers for their own cards, or they act as banks for their own cards. So they actually get two slices of the pie. The next portion or several portions of the fee goes to credit card processors. These are called acquirers and they're kind of like middlemen who actually process the transaction and there could be many of them uh, within one transaction. And the names of these uh, processors, that they're probably not really that well known to the public. The next portion of the merchant fee goes to merchant account providers. And those are the companies that actually provide the processing service directly to the merchants. A really good example of this is Square, which is actually the one I use on my website. And it's quite popular, especially with small stores. Uh, you may see their iPads with Square card readers in many stores. Now there's one more slice of the pie that may or may not be paid to someone, and that is the portion paid to the payment gateway. So in the case of e-commerce, uh, that could be a certain website that integrates a merchant services account provider into their platform, uh, and they take a small cut. Uh, also, Apple Pay actually takes a very small cut uh, of payments too. That would also class as the payment gateway. One interesting fact about this is that American Express doesn't actually make any money on interest charges on its charge cards because charge cards you have to pay off at the end of every month. Obviously Amex does have a line of credit cards as well, but 
a large amount of their cards are actually charge cards. So they have to make that up somewhere else. So American Express merchant fees uh, tend to be a little higher and American Express is also getting two slices of that pie from the merchant fees because they are both the issuer and the bank. Um, and that's also another reason why some stores won't accept American Express. They'll say Visa and MasterCard only, no American Express, or they'll say American Express only if it's over $10, something like that. Uh, it's because their merchant fees are a little bit higher than Visa and MasterCard. All right, guys, so I hope that was an interesting little look into how credit card companies make money. Obviously, there is quite a huge breakdown. If you want to look at exactly how the merchant fees are broken down, down to the like 0.000 something percent, uh, there's there's some articles that I can link uh, in the description of this video you can go check out online that sort of lists out all the different parties that are taking a fee. It's actually quite interesting, but uh, too much to explain uh, in one video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're new, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.